Please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for so many blessings that you've given us. We've we've sung about the day that Jesus is coming again, the King is coming. We've sung about the power that you have. We've sung about the glory that you have. We ask that that everything we do today will be in keeping with, with your will and and in remembrance of the blessings you've given us. Now, Father, we ask you to be with our pastor as he brings your word to us that we may receive them, and accept those, and follow, follow them in, in the ways that you would have us do. We say this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. If you have your mouth, your turn with me to the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 1. I realize this is an uh, old story or a little joke, but I'll tell it again because it goes right along with uh, the message this morning. An Amish man met this Amish lady and fell in love and got married. Walking out of the church, getting a little buggy, headed down the road. The old horse just took off running. No cause whatsoever. He hollered, whoa, whoa, finally pulled him back down to a walk and says, horse, that's one. A little while later, the, something jumped out, scared him, and took off again. He pulled her back down and finally got her back down to walk. He says, horse, that's two. Pulled in the driveway, going to the house, and the horse just tired and just stopped. The old man, not known for violence, pulled a gun out, walked up the horse, said, that's three, and shot him in the head. The brand new bride there says, husband, why shoot a good horse? He turned to his new bride and said, woman, that's one. Now, I know you've heard that, but I thought I'd remind you of the story. God... Here in chapter 3, verse 1, he says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. We find here where God has given Jonah a second chance, okay? Gives Jonah a second chance. Now, what is a second chance? That's an opportunity to change a, a wrong to make it right. Now, many of you, God gives second chances to Maybe you're sitting here today and God's given you a second chance. It's important to take advantage of, of second chances. But now, that's not a promise. There's not a guarantee that God's always going to give you a second chance. God doesn't have to give us a second chance. All God does do and has promised us is to give us a chance. Some people will only get one chance. One chance to get it right or to get it wrong. You say, well, that doesn't seem fair, but God's the one that decides. I don't get to decide. You don't get to decide. God may only give you one chance. And your chance may be here today, and you get one chance. I I think of people, uh, and to make that commitment true or that promise true, I I think of the book of Acts where it talks about Ananias and Sapphira. You remember the story? The church was just booming and and things was doing great because the Holy Spirit had come down and and joined in their lives and and the church was being increased daily. Thousands were coming to know the Lord and being baptized. And and it was joy in in the camp of God's people. And here we had these two uh, people, a man and a wife. And they had saw where a lot of people were selling their land and giving it to the church and God was blessing them and they just wanted to be a part of the blessing. They just wanted to be a part of the excitement. and, And they went out and sold their land for a certain amount of money. And they came portraying that they were giving every bit of it uh, to the Lord. They kept back a little bit though. But they said, well, nobody will know the difference. They kept back a little bit. 
Now, I think sometimes, I believe a lot of times, people sit in these pews, very pews here, stand behind this very sacred desk here, hold back a little bit sometimes. We don't give it our all. But we claim to be giving our all to Jesus. I surrender all, but yet hold back a little and you remember the stories that continue talks about Ananias and Sapphire, what happened that, that all of a sudden Peter called Ananias and brought him before and he asked him, said, Satan filled thine heart with a lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land while it remaineth, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not by thy own power? Why did you hold it back? Why did you pretend that you were giving it all? He said, at that very moment, Ananias died. God didn't give him a chance to make it right. God took his life. His wife wasn't there, but a little later, uh, she came in and, and Peter addressed this with her. And he says, why did you get together with your husband and y'all come up with this plan that we're going to hold back and nobody's going to know the difference? And what happened to her? She died. God didn't give her a second chance. I, I remember the story of Judas. You remember what he did? He went and betrayed Jesus with a kiss. For 30 pieces of silver, he went and thought that I, nobody's going to know the difference who betrayed him or who did this, but I'm going to get this money out of this. And all of a sudden, after he did that, it just began to eat on him. He felt bad about it. To the point that he took the money back he says, I want to I wanna make this wrong that I've done right. I want to give it back because I don't want to live with this. I don't want to live with the money. I don't want to live with myself. And they wouldn't take it back. So he threw it down at the feet. He says, I'm not taking it back. He was miserable. And he went out and he hung himself. He died. He didn't have that chance to make it right. Didn't have that chance. But I know Peter, on the other hand, you remember, he, he went and denied the Lord. He told him he would. Didn't think he would, but he denied him. But the Lord gave him a check of chance. He came to him and said, love, Do you love me, Peter? He said, Yea, Lord, I love you. He said, Feed my sheep. He said, I'm going to give you a second chance. You've denied me once, but I'm going to give you a second chance. Here's what's happened to Jonah. God is giving him a second chance. A second chance is kind of like a, a ball game. In a ball game, a lot of times, football is getting ready to start, and I know a lot of y'all may be getting excited. If you're an Auburn fan, we're just hoping, you know. But it's getting started, but during a football game, you have a halftime. Now, what is a halftime? It, it's a time to be able to go in a locker room and be able to go over what's going over, what took place in the first half. Now, you may not have done well in the first half. You may be behind after the first half. But this is an opportunity for the coach to readdress some of the things that's been done wrong. Or address some things that we need to change to go out in the second half. Or maybe a coach is reaffirming the good things he's doing. Here's another second chance. Don't blow it. But it's a second chance because you go out in the second half, it can change everything. I've known game, uh, uh, teams to be behind after the first half, but change it around the second half. Man, you know what? That that's probably makes it even sweeter, doesn't it? Makes it even sweeter when you're getting by, beat real bad after the first half and went in and, and got motivated and got things right and changed your plan and, and got focused and go out and win it. Man, that, that's a victory to celebrate, isn't it? God giving a second chance. It's kind of like a halftime pep talk. But if you remember, he gave him the chance, first of all, in verse, chapter 1, verse 1. He said, The word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of uh, Mennonite, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah did not go there, but he rose up to flee, to go away from the direction God has given him. Now, if you were to look, God told him to go this direction. He said, I'm going to go this direction. Isn't it amazing how we think we, we've got that choice? We do have that choice. We do have that choice. My dad used to tell me that a lot growing up. He said, son, you have a choice. 
You can do it the easy way or you can do it the hard way, but no more or less, you're going to do it. I think that's basically what he told Jonah. I'm going to told you to do it. And you're going to do it either the easy way or the hard way. A lot of us, we're just trying to be hard-headed a lot of times. We're trying to buck up and say, I, I don't have to do that. I'm going to do it my way. But he rose up and he to flee. Folks, when we raise up after this service, sitting in the pew, God talking to our hearts and trying to lead our lives, we can raise up and we can leave here and go in one of two directions. We can go in the direction God gives us to go, gives us that chance, or we can go in an opposite direction. And so he did that. And Satan, he provided opportunities for them, him to do that. That's the way Satan works. If you don't want to follow God's plan, he's going to give you a way out. The way it sounds good looks good. Let's make it real simple. We, we're getting real close to starting a new church year. Maybe God's put something on your heart to do. Maybe work with uh, children. Now, I used to be a youth minister many years ago. I'm glad God changed that calling. Kids can be mean. Some of y'all ain't worked with kids. I can tell by looking at y'all. I was at a church and uh, working with the youth with my home church. And I'm telling you, I had some angels at that church. I mean, they was a blessing to be with. And a church just down the, down the road, I didn't have to move. I mean, it was just close to the vicinity of where I lived. And they called me and asked me to be their youth minister. Now, why would I want to leave them little angels and go down there to this church? Now, this church was going to pay me money. My home church wasn't even paying me. But I'll be honest, I thought you can't pay me enough to keep the kids y'all got. These were mean little kids. I mean, when you go there and they, they don't even go by their real names. One name was Tornado. That was his name, Tornado. I mean, they had all the... They was mean. I mean, I take drugs away from them when they brought, come into church. I take guns, I mean, not guns, but knives away from them. I mean, they were mean kids. I drove this little old bitty Chevrolet car. I went out one day and it was gone. And I had it locked up. They all gathered around him, my big old boys, and they drug it out behind. They drug it, physically drug my car and hid it behind the church. They stole, stole my hub couch one day. I mean, these was mean kids. But they had asked me to come and be their youth minister, and I just told them, look, God hadn't called me to babysit no youngins. He called me to preach, be a pastor. And I told them no. Went back to my home church. I sat there and listened to that preacher that morning, and I tell you what, I was miserable. I was miserable. The whole time I'm thinking, I don't want to go, but that's where God told me to go. I was miserable. And I went back that night to that church hoping that they'd done got somebody else. I slipped in. Preacher had already been preaching. Uh, preaching. I just sat down in the back pew and they all kind of saw me come in. After the service, I just went up to preach. I said, look, I understand. I told y'all no and I understand if y'all moved on and to get somebody else. I understand. I said, but the Lord had just whipped me all day long. If y'all still want me, I'll come. I went. I'd like to tell you it was an easy trip, but it wasn't. It was hard. But it was a whole lot better being in God's will than being out of God's will. It's a lot easier. Jonah decided he's going to go away. And he goes away and found this ship and he's going in the opposite direction where God told him to go. And if you continue reading, you'll find it all of a sudden... God didn't forget who he was. God knew exactly where he was at. And God did what? He took action. God's going to take action. If you rebel against God, don't obey God. God pulls at your heart about being obedient and following him through salvation, through baptism, through church membership, through uh, uh, service or whatever God's calling you to do. You disobey. God's going to respond. God's going to respond. God is faithful in responding. 
Can you imagine growing up in the home that I grew up with? My dad told me to take the garbage out and I stuck my tongue out at him. I assure you one thing. If I'd have done that, my dad would have responded. And I don't believe he'd have just stuck his tongue back at, at me. I believe he would have responded. And I promise you, God's going to respond. No matter what we do, God's going to respond. If we do good or we do bad, God's going to respond. That's a good thing about it. God tells us to do something, He's going to respond in a good way. He's going to reward us. He's going to bless you if you respond in a good way. But God's going to respond. So He responded to His uh, disobedient and going away from Him to send this big storm out upon the sea. Now, I don't know how many of you get out on the boats and do different things, but I'm a land lover, okay? I'm a land lover. I mean, we go on vacation, they go out and look at the dolphins, and if just a wave hits that boat a little bit, I'm thinking, I'm ready to find land. I can't imagine that boat, how it was shifting and how it had been tossed. And it was so bad that people that normally travel on the seas were getting afraid. I was fishing one day with another preacher friend of mine. He was a younger preacher uh, than I. He was one of these guys I had in a youth group, and he uh, surrendered to preach. And he was out with me fishing one day. And we was on Gunnersville Lake, and a storm came up. And I mean, just like that, before we get the anchor up and started in, had a little 14 foot flat bottom boat. And we just there trolling that one then behind, you know. We just headed in. And I mean, it came up a storm in a hurry. I mean, the waves were so big that it would crash over the front of the boat. And then it would sway up and it would dip it in the back of the boat. And then it would go down and it'd dip it in the front. I'm sitting here wondering about this. That poor little old uh, young preacher I had with me, he was, he was, he had it together. He's hollering me back at me, we're going to die. We're going to die. In the story, I'm here. We didn't die. But I mean, I seen a sailboat just a little ways from us. I mean, they're trying to get their sail down. The wind got, it turned it over. And there's people hanging on the side of the boat. He said, you think we were to help them? I said, we can't help ourselves. How are we going to help them? But that's finally another boat went out and got them. But we finally made it to shore. But I was scared. Well, Jonah was in such a, a situation that he went to sleep in this boat. And everybody's panicking on top. They're doing everything in their power. Uh, they're praying to their gods. They're, they're doing everything. And they find this fellow asleep doing nothing. Now, folks, you don't even have to be a godly person to know that when, when danger's around, somebody, you ought to be doing something. You ought to be doing something. That's just good common sense. Everybody's doing everything in their power, and you over here are sleeping. They knew that was wrong. So they woke him up. Woke him up. Isn't it amazing? A lot of times when we get so far away from God, nothing even bothers us anymore. We get hard-hearted and we just cold and we just indifferent. We don't care about anybody else's life. We don't care nothing about our lives anymore. And we just go on. That's sort of what Jonah had gotten because he didn't take advantage of his first chance God gave him. He was being disobedient. Finally, they cast those lots out there to find out exactly what was going on. And it fell on Jonah. And they said to Jonah, said, why is this happening? Jonah goes and says, I, look, I serve and I believe in the, the living God, the true God, the creator. And he's punishing because of me. He knew why the things was going wrong in his life. Now, we may face storms. It may not be because we're being disobedient, but he knew exactly why things was happening the way they were. He knew exactly what was going on. After they told him what to do, what do people do? He said, you're just going to have to throw me overboard because as long as you got me here with you, you ain't going to be blessed. You're going you're gonna to reap the things because of me. They didn't want to do that. They tried to take things in their own hand first. They thought they'd throw stuff overboard, make the ship lighter. They don't throw this man over. They throw the, their treasures over. And said they rolled harder, but no matter what they did, they weren't getting anywhere. 
until finally they gave in. They threw him overboard. They threw him overboard. I can imagine Jonah thought, well, I'm just going to die here. I noticed when the guys asked me this morning who we were preaching from, I said, from Jonah. He said, oh, Jonah caught a big fish. I said, no, Jonah didn't catch a big fish. A big fish caught Jonah. That's not the way it's supposed to work. When I go fishing, I'm hoping to catch a fish. I don't go fishing hoping a fish catches me, okay? I mean, kind of got it turned around. Isn't that the way it is in life when you're not following God, things get turned around and messed up and aren't going the way they ought to be going? That's everything going backwards for Jonah. They're not going forward, they're going backwards. That's where we get in life when we don't take advantage of the chances that God gives us. Then we come to chapter 2 real quickly. I don't have time to read these. But we come to chapter 2 and all of a sudden... Jonah finds himself. He thought this old fish coming. He thought this is in. It's over with. And the old fish uh, swallowed him up. But somehow or another, God didn't let him die. Sometimes people just think, I'll just die and get it over with. Well, you can't just do that. God's the one who decides when you die and when you don't die. I can imagine he just let a little pocket of air get in there just enough where he could breathe, just keep him alive. I can't imagine what it's like being inside of a great big fish. But I don't promise you one thing. They're not kerosene lanterns in there. They're not a flashlight. It's dark. Not only is it dark, it smells. Not only is it... I can imagine he had just enough air to just sort of grasp and fight and fight for his life. Inside of that fish. God just let him hang on. Until finally it said that Jonah did something. Verse 1 of chapter 2, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the belly's, uh, fish's belly. And he said, I cry by the reasons of mine afflictions unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, Thou heardest my voice. The Lord knows exactly where we're at. He knows exactly what we've got ourselves into. But he's there waiting for us to call. He's just waiting for the call. All we've got to do is call. But he finally gave in and said, I'm going to call the Lord. He said, I, I, he's not going to say, well, I disobeyed God. He's not going to hear me. God's punishing me. God's just waiting. God's just waiting. And he prayed. And God came through. God came through. Verse 8 of chapter 2, he said, They that oppress lying vanities forsake their own mercy. The NIV says it this way, those who cling to the worthless idols forfeit the grace that God, that could be theirs. The grace that could be theirs. So many people has an opportunity to be blessed by God. You may be sitting here, God gives you a chance for to be blessed from heaven, for him to open the windows of heaven up for you to bless you and anoint you. And you cling to things other than God and you lose out on that opportunity. Folks, I don't want to lose out on anything that God has for me. I don't want him uh, to, to take and have to give it to somebody. I want it, if it's for me, I want it. Not only that, I want my family to be blessed. I want the things that God has for me. I don't want to cling to these things of this earth. So the fish spit him out upon the land. God gave him this second chance here. A second chance. I want to promise you something. I believe Jonah was motivated to take advantage of this second chance. I don't know what you've been through, but he was ready to go to Nineveh. He's ready now. God's given him this chance. I, I got to believe that a lot of the people of Nineveh probably saw him when he got spit up. I got to believe that words started getting out. There's a man out there, you ain't going to believe this, got spit out of a fish. You got to imagine he, he probably didn't come in there in a three piece suit and a tie. I imagine he still had seaweed hanging from his neck. I can imagine they could see this man had been beaten, battered. And he starts telling them about the Lord, telling them what the Lord's fixing to do, how God is a God that gets revenge. God is a just God. You better listen to God. He tells them that God's going to destroy them. And he goes through and, and a great thing happens. Not only did Jonah have a second chance, 
Nineveh had a second chance. Nineveh had a second chance. These were perverted people. I mean, they were taking it and peeling skin off of live people. I mean, they were torturing people. And God gave them a second chance. You know what it says? It said here in chapter 3, if you were to read down a little bit further, the king went out and put a thing out and said, look, we need to cover ourselves with ash, uh, uh, sackcloth and ashes. We need to repent. We need to change. We need to turn. And maybe, just maybe God, I have mercy. Maybe God will not destroy us. And guess what happened? They took advantage of that second chance and God didn't destroy them here. God changed his mind because they took advantage of the chance given them. They took advantage. Isn't it so un Important to take advantage of the chances that God gives them, especially if it's a second chance. Especially if it's a second chance. Now, I want to say, you may not get a second chance. You may only get one chance. But you need to take advantage of that chance. Because there's nothing good going to come from being disobedient. I thank God for giving me a chance. To accept Him as my personal Lord and Savior. I thank God for that. I thank God for giving me a chance of committing my life to be a servant of His. I thank God for that chance. I, I thank God for second chances of when I was dis disobedient and wanted to do it my way rather than His way. I thank God for that. There's blessings in taking advantage of the chances. But I want to tell you something. We started off saying there's some then didn't get another chance. But I promise you, if you're here today under my voice and the conviction of the Holy Spirit, this is a chance. It may be your first chance, maybe your second, and it may even be your last. What will we do with the chance that God gives us? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we're so